when we are creating a message, we might be misinterpreted, of course, but in the act of creation, I think there are some kind of elements that are almost like the grammar of the visual arts. Example, the same image painted sharp has got a very different feeling than the same image blurry and hazy, like a ghost. Or the same image painted with strong zigzags, very angular, is different from the same image painted with soft curves. So the angular is more aggressive, of course, because it's like blades, it's like knives. And soft curves, it's not aggressive. It's like, it's like something soft, like a balloon, or maybe like the mother's body. The same image, full of little details, creates a different feeling than the same image simplified with just flat colors, more graphic. There seems to be this kind of grammar of the visual language, the same way that in singing, if you shout aggressively, of course your voice expresses a different feeling than if you sing with a very, very, very pretty sound. There are also musical grammars, so to speak, and vocabulary, of course. So we have a dictionary of kinds of sounds and what they provoke on the listener, at least on the average of listeners. And I think the visual arts are the same. Kandinsky wrote a very interesting book because he had synesthesia. Kandinsky used to associate images with sound. So he wrote a book which is called Concerning the Spiritual in Art. As far as I know, it's the first written treatise that tries to describe the language of abstract art. So Kandinsky said something beautiful. I don't agree with him, but I think it's beautiful what he says. Kandinsky said that if you do representational art, so if you do realistic art, if you copy nature, if you copy reality, that means you are a materialist because you are giving too much importance to the material aspect of things. He says that the art, in order to be spiritual, has to sublimate the material. So according to him, the more abstract, the more the pure spirit it would be. He started writing a whole thesis on how to paint abstract art and how to make it spiritual and how to communicate emotions. And he wrote fascinating things. For example, he says that a very bright, strong yellow is similar to a high-pitched whistle. It's like a high-pitched sound, it's aggressive. And a dark brown is similar to the low notes of the cello. I don't have synesthesia, but I immediately understood what Kandinsky wanted to say. A shape that is full of needles, we almost feel the pain, right? Or imagine a triangle. If you paint it like this, it's stable because the flat bottom is horizontal. The moment you paint it like this, it's unstable. You think it's going to fall. So just by rotating the same shape, it creates a different dynamic. And if you put it in the corner of the screen, now it feels like it's flying up, about to exit the painting. It has a different feeling than if it's in the middle. In the middle, it's total stability. It's amazing how we can create messages by using this kind of metaphors. So I don't have an answer for you, Ali Reza. I think there might be a universal language of the visual arts, and maybe it is the unconscious that you are talking about. Exactly. This is what Jung called collective unconscious. Jung explained that all of the human being considering the individual unconscious have a union in the humanity of what is called collective unconscious. For example, when you walk in the London streets and try to have a conversation 
with someone maybe you know maybe you don't know he, he, he understand you and what causes you connect with each other in every culture is your collective unconscious and as you know young find the mandala symbols in every culture when he talks about the mandala a square and the triangle circles this is a special symbols and maybe we, as an artist know as several other names and maybe with this name the young try to prove that his collective unconscious is true why are human beings why in all cultures all countries all around the world there are some common elements where it comes from 